Hello and welcome back again. So the Barbie movie is coming out soon and I have to make an outfit for it. I want to make an outfit inspired by this gingham dress for the movie and it's a little bit more of a swim set so I want to modify it and make it more a wearable dress for me. I really love pink gingham. It's one of my favorite fabrics so that's why I decided to do this little set. I'm super excited. I think it's going to come out really cute so let's get started. Before I start making a dress, I always figure out the design in my head first, then I sketch it out to help get all the details and plan it out. I'm not the best at drawing, so I'm lazy about actually drawing all my design ideas, but I regret it when I don't, so I make myself do it. Alright, we're heading to the fabric market to go buy some fabric. I got the lining fabric, but I couldn't find any light pink gingham fabric, so I'm gonna have to order that online. So now it's just time to head home. Okay, so I got the lining fabric at the fabric market, but I couldn't find the gingham fabric, so I already ordered it. So I'm hoping that it'll be here by the end of the week. But for now, we're going to work on the lining and get it all cut out so that I can test out the pattern. And hopefully when the gingham fabric gets here, I'll still have enough time to finish the dress. I think I'll be okay. This is not going to be a super fancy design, but I think it's going to be real cute. So let's get going. So I'm starting with two bodice patterns I already made before, including the one I made for my last project. And I'm modifying them to make the bodice for this dress. I'm using the knowledge I learned from the last times I made this dress to make the pattern fit better and because I want to add a sweetheart neckline to the bodice front. So I got those all made and cut out and now we can use those for cutting out the rest of the dress. So first I'm starting with the lining layer. On this dress there's going to be two layers, a lining layer and an outer layer which is going to be the pink gingham. There's so many pieces to this dress. I think it took me longer to cut everything out and to make the pattern than it's actually going to take to make the dress, which is a little silly, but you know, that's how it goes. So once I finally got everything cut out, it was time to start assembling the underlayer. So yeah, I'm starting with the underskirt first because it's easy and I want to start with something easy. And with the skirt, I'm going to be using my pockets with them. So I'm marking out where I want the seams for the side of the skirt to be. Here's my pockets. Um, if I have a hole in the side seams of the skirt, then I can reach the pockets underneath. So yeah, I made these as well. They're based on like 18th century pockets and they're super handy. I definitely recommend making yourself a pair. They're super handy. I really like using them. Anyway, so I went ahead and finished up the side seams for the ruffle in the main part of the skirt. And then I sewed a gathering stitch and lace onto the ruffle part. And I gathered it up onto the skirt uh, just at the bottom. I hear a lot of people complain about doing ruffles and gathering things and stuff. But I think it's one of the easiest things to do. I would much rather make a skirt any day than a bodice. I got the fabric that I ordered, so let's open it up. Alright, here's the gingham that I ordered. Uh, it's not exactly what I was expecting. I was expecting the print to be a lot bigger, but it's okay. The color is really cute, so I think it'll work out fine. So these are going to be for my next project, which is from like a pride fairy type of look and it's all looking really cute so i'm super excited for this next project so it's a little bit of a sneak peek here now that i have the gingham fabric and i finished the underskirt i'm making the pattern for the scalloped skirt i made the pattern using half of the skirt measurement i used the underskirt to estimate how wide i wanted the scallops to be when i figured out the approximate size i divided the width by how many scallops i wanted I marked the width of each scallop and the middle point too. I measured how long I wanted the midpoint to be for the length and then connected the points using a curved ruler. 
It's a little tricky to explain, but it's easier than it sounds. Honestly, I don't like math, and I use my measuring tape and fold it up to figure out my measurements most of the time. Anyway, so I got all the gingham pieces cut out, and I love how the scallops are looking. So it's time to start working on the bodice, and I know it's going to be so annoying because of the heart cutout and the shirt panel at the back, but it'll be worth it anyway. So yeah, I ironed some interfacing to the middle bodice pieces first because it'll help with doing the heart cutout later. Then I assembled the outer and lining layers separately, and I added waist ties to the side seams of the outer layer. The waist ties are just long rectangles that I sewed a point onto one end. I pleated the other end onto the bodice and sewed it up. So now I gotta see how it fits. Okay, so here's how it's looking so far. I just have it tied in the back with the waist ties, but I haven't added the back panel yet. And I think it's a little too straight on the top. I think I want to bring the curve down a little bit more so it's a little bit more of a curve. And the little heart cutout is going to be like right around here. So I don't want to bring it down too much. But yeah, I think I'm going to do a little bit of modifications here. Okay, I added the lace and finished up the top edge and added the sleeves, but I don't know, I'm kind of feeling like the neckline is still a little too high. I think I need to bring it down a little bit more still, because I think the proportions are just slightly off. I want the heart cut out to be around here, and it's just feeling a little bit weird, so I don't know. I'm going to try it out and test out some stuff and see how, what I what I'm feeling like. Okay, so I wanted to talk about Barbie a little bit, since this is a Barbie themed video. I grew up with a few Barbies, and the two that I remember most was this ridiculous crystal lip gloss skirt Barbie, because she had cool gemstones, and I've always loved crystals and gemstones, but I remember the lip gloss was like horrible, very messy. I also had Think Pink Barbie, and I liked her because she came with a cassette tape, yes, I grew up with cassette tapes, with this amazing song on it. Oh yeah, so good. I listened to it on repeat and lived my pop star fantasy in my bedroom. My mom also had this really fancy Venetian themed Barbie. She was like a collector's Barbie, so she was very fancy and expensive. The clothes she had were so detailed and high quality. She's definitely one of the reasons I wanted to sew. She was kept in a glass box, so I would sit and stare at all the tiny amazing details. I wanted to make my own clothes just like that. As soon as Bratz dolls came out though, I was converted. I like Bratz and Monster High dolls way more, but ball jointed dolls are my favorite. I actually started sewing for the first ball jointed doll that I got. So while I have no plans of buying or collecting any Barbies, I also can't deny that Barbies did inspire me when I was growing up, and I have to have some appreciation for her. Alright, back to the sewing. It's time for the scariest part, the heart cutout. I did it applique style and sewed a really close together zigzag stitch around the outline and I hated the way it came out the first time, so I ripped it out and I did it again. Going around the curved bits is so difficult, you have to go really slow and make small adjustments constantly. I'm not an expert at this and maybe I should have just done a flip it inside out style cutout, but this is what I ended up doing anyway. After I made the outline, I went back and cut out the fabric inside the heart. The interfacing on the inside of this part of the bodice was super important for doing this step, by the way. You can try and do appliques like this without interfacing, but they come out horrible. The interfacing makes the fabric more stiff, so it will hold its shape better, and the uh, zigzag stitching will come out really nice and smooth. So after I washed off the markings from the heart, the bodice needed to dry, so I made a heart tote bag to go with the dress. I'm going to have a pattern and tutorial how to make this purse on my Patreon. It came out so cute, I'm so excited to share it. Okay, so I've got an accessory made. Now the only thing left is the shirring panel at the back and putting the bodice and skirt together. So there are a lot of different ways to add a shirt or elastic panel in a dress. This is the way that I did it this time and the way I usually do it, although after thinking about it, I should have added the shirt panel to the back pieces before I attached the front and back together and then sewn the side seams closed, but I didn't do that. 
So this time I added the back panel to the bodice and then added top stitching to the top of the panel and then marked all the lines for sewing the elastic channels. I measured half an inch apart for the channels for the elastic and an inch between each channel. Then I sewed across all the lines I drew to make the channels, but I left the bottom one not sewn yet because I need to add the skirt before I can add the elastic. So I gathered the skirt layers onto the bodice and sewed them on. Also, I don't gather the skirts on the panel that's going to be for the shirring because the elastic will gather this section of the skirt. I want the panel, including the waist skirt seam, to be stretchy. I've seen dresses where they don't make the waist seam part of the shirt panel stretchy, and that makes no sense to me. It needs to be stretchy, otherwise it's useless. I try and add shirt panels to most of my dresses because it makes them way more comfy and fit better. I also skipped doing a zipper on this dress so I could just pull it on using the elastic. Although, I probably should have added a zipper and maybe I'll add one later. Anyway, so I got the skirt pieces sewn on and finished, then I sewed a channel right above the waist seam. And I threaded elastic through all of the channels. I usually use a plastic embroidery needle that's not sharp, tied to some twine, and then with a large, very sharp needle, pull the twine through the elastic and tie a knot in it. Then you can just pull the needle through the channel and pull the elastic through. This works especially well for pulling elastic through waistbands and longer channels. But recently I got one of these hook fabric turning tools and it's so amazing. I definitely recommend getting one. It makes turning things inside out and pulling elastic through short distances much easier. Okay, now the elastic is in so I fold it over and sew down one side of the lining to secure the elastic. I like doing the assured panel this way because it looks very nice and finished. Then I pulled all the elastic on the other side to the width I wanted the panel to be. Also, doing all of these steps to make the shirt panel seriously took hours, longer than most of the rest of the steps for the dress. I also had to try on the dress a few times while I was finishing up the elastic to make sure that it fit right. Once I got the shirt panel the way I wanted it, I cut off the extra elastic and folded down the lining and sewed it over to finish it up. The lining still needed to be secured along the waistline, so I just folded it under and pinned it and then sewed it down. I also added the straps to the back, just sewing them on. And that's finally everything done! Oh my gosh! This dress took me about two weeks in total from buying the fabric, making the pattern, cutting it out, and sewing it. And I ended up finishing it the day before going to see the Barbie movie. We're heading to go see the Barbie movie now. We went to the Pathé Tushinsky Theater in Amsterdam and it was gorgeous. It's an Art Deco style theater that was made in 1921 by Polish immigrant Abraham Tushinsky. It was built to be a movie theater from the beginning and there are a few places like it. It's been renovated a few times but it's been preserved as well as possible and the interior is just stunning. There are tiny details everywhere. Intricate wallpaper lined the walls and there's a beautiful warm glow from all the lamps. It really felt like going back in time and the 1920s is one of my favorite eras for fashion and architecture. I would love to come back another time in a full 1920s look to really immerse myself in the experience. I also got balcony tickets so we got a drink and snack included which was brought to us. It was so lovely and fancy. The screen isn't quite as good as most modern theaters but the ambiance made up for it. Also, the Barbie movie was so brilliant and it had the whole theater laughing and crying together. This movie is instantly one of my favorites now and I have to see it again soon. Hi Barbie! <laughs> That's That's so cute. Cute. The Barbie movie was so amazing! I love it so much, oh my gosh. All right, we just got out of the Barbie movie and it was amazing. I loved it so much. It was exactly what I wanted out of a Barbie movie and you definitely have to go see it. Oh my yes, gosh. It's perfect. I love it so much. Yes.
And that was it. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process of how I made this dress. It seems a lot easier on the video than it actually was in real life. Oh, it was really difficult and annoying, but it came out really cute in the end, so it was worth it. Also, I had so much fun at the Barbie movie. It was so good. I definitely recommend checking it out. It made me cry at least once. And I hope it brings in a new wave of pink loving girlies. And I'm so excited about it. Yes. And also, if you want to make your own heart tote bag, you can sign up for my Patreon. And I have the tutorial and the pattern on how to make these. They came out so cute and you can make one for yourself. So that was it. I hope you join me next time. Please give me a comment, something that you liked or that you want to see me make and subscribe and yeah thank you and i'll see you all next time bye also really quick before we go here is how the pockets on the skirt work they're really handy i love using them i definitely recommend trying this out if you haven't done this before it's so useful mm -hmm.